Hello viewers, welcome to this lesson in mathematics. I am your online teacher, Mr. Steve Yetawa. Today we look at mathematics in calculus 1 involving differentiation. Part 2, that is calculus 2, involves integration. So particularly uh, we shall be looking at differentiation today. This is a series of lessons that we are organizing to help our learners revise uh, for their exams. I will take you through this um, lesson in around 40 minutes and then we shall have 40 minutes uh, in the live section. This is a recorded lesson and I would like you to go through with me and during the live section we shall have an activity and also a question and answer time. Straight away, let's get to our lesson. We shall be discussing on how to determine gradient function uh, given an equation of, uh, uh, given a certain equation. So part one is how do we get gradient function and how do we go about using it. Two, we shall determine stationary points on the curve. Other times we call that, or those stationary points, turning points. We shall also look at curve sketching. How do we sketch a curve? And what are the most uh, key areas that we should denote when you are doing curve sketching? And lastly, we shall look at the application of differentiation in kinematics. Kinematics is the mathematics that involves motion in uh, calculating displacement. This is distance traveled by a particle in a particular direction, velocity, the speed in a given direction, and acceleration, the rate of, the rate of change in of velocity uh, in given time. So we shall do this in form of some questions, and as the first, as I had said earlier, we shall have an activity during the live section whereby you will work out a question on your own and then report or narrate how you have done it. Let's get started with example one. In our example one, we shall have a curve is represented by the equation. So this is example one. Example one. A curve is represented. A curve is represented by the equation. By the equation. A curve is represented by the equation. Y is equal to two x cubed plus 3 x squared minus 12 x plus 7. Our questions begin here. A. Determine its gradient function. Determine, determine its gradient function. Gradient function. Gradient function is an expression or an equation that represents gradient at any point on the curve. So we give it as dy dx, that is, we differentiate the expression for y, for y with respect to x, that is uh, what it means. And this one gives you, differentiating this one gets uh, 2 times 3, that is 6x, 3 minus 1 gives you x squared, 2 by 3 is 6x, 2 minus 1 gives you 1, minus uh, 1 times 12 is 12, uh, the x here will be raised to the power of 1 minus 1, which is 0, any number raised to the power 0 gives you a 1, so 12 times 1 is just 12, then we have plus 7. If we differentiate a constant, say 7, it is assumed that 7 is being multiplied by 
x to the power 0. Now, 0 times 7, when you are differentiating, gives you a 0. And that is how the differential of a constant uh, 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 is a 0. So, we end at that point. I repeat on this one. Uh, 1 times 12 is 12. The 1 minus 1 is x to the power 0, which is a 1. 12 times 1 is just 12. And the differential of a constant is 0. zero. So, that is our expression for gradient function. Um, let's move on to question number B. Part B of this uh, work. We need to ask ourselves, well, we have this question. De uh, that is on part 2 now. Determine the coordinates of the turning point. At times it is asked, determine the nature and the coordinates of the turning point. So we shall combine the two uh, uh, cases. Uh, determine, determine the coordinates. Let's do the coordinates first. Determine the coordinates of the turning points. Of the turning points. And if there are many, then we have it in plural turning points. So we look at that and we work it out in the form of a series of steps which we shall be guided uh, from here. Now, this point here, or what we are calling a turning point, is very key area in differentiation because we normally say at at the turning point, at the turning point, uh, the dy dx is equal to zero. The gradient of that curve at the turning point is zero. What does that one mean? It means that uh, if the, the turning point is of that nature, at this point, the gradient, the line is a tangent and it's a horizontal line. So the gradient uh, is zero, or if it is a, a, a minimum of that, then this is the turning point. So at this point, the gradients are zero. That is the explanation behind stating this way. So now that we have calculated gradient function in the first step, we shall not redo it again. We carry it over. So we say uh, 6x squared minus, uh, actually plus 6x minus 12 at the turning point, that is equal to 0. The gradient function at the turning point is equal to 0. So this forms a quadratic equation which we, uh, we solve uh, by the easiest approaches that we can think of. And one of them is factorization method. However, looking at this, there is a common multiple of 6 which we can divide out to make the expression simpler. So, we're dividing out by 6 throughout, we get, we uh, can split this space into 2, we shall have um, 3, uh, sorry, uh, dividing by 6, we get x squared plus divided by 6 we get 1x then minus divided by 6 we get 2 is equal to 0 so in this expression we think of two numbers p and q whose product is 1 by negative 2 negative 2 and others are the same numbers when you add them together you get positive 1 so which are these set of numbers. Which are these two set of numbers? Uh, run it through your mind and uh, come up with the solution to that. So you get that the number must be greater than 1. So we take on 2 and when multiply, you need a number which to multiply by 2 to give you a negative 2 and that is a negative 1. So those are the two numbers which when you multiply you get negative 2, when
when you add, you get positive 1. These two numbers, we feed them, we substitute them into the middle term. We get what? x squared plus, now we take 2x uh, minus 1x, this one, uh, minus 2 is equal to 0. So that is um, the expression that we are having for the quadratic equation. Um, let's factor out. In this first set, x is common, so we get x out and we get x plus 2. And in this set, negative 1 is common, we are left with x uh, plus 2 is equal to 0. Viewers, I'd like you to note this change of sign here, that a negative 1 multiplied by negative positive 2, negative 1 times positive 2 gives you negative 2. So we have to change the sign here so that we match the original expression. So working out, factoring, we are getting the common uh, multiples, we get x minus 1 is one factor and x plus 2 is the other factor. So it's either where we have x minus 1 is equal to 0 and that leads us to saying x is equal to 1 or x plus 2 is equal to 0 and that leads us to having x is equal to negative 2. So at this point it is important to realize that um, when we are required to give the coordinates coordinates means two different uh, points that is the x and the y here we have already, we have just gotten the x values and they are two different ones so what are their corresponding y values so we shall seek to get y we seek for y and we are going to get this in the equation. The equation for y. This is the equation for y. So we substitute the x value here so that we get the y value. That would give us what? We shall have y into, or rather is equal to 2 into, uh, the value is 1, so we cube that, plus 3 into 1, which we shall square. Uh, subtract 12 uh, multiplied by 1 multiplied by 1 that is 12 multiplied by 1 minus 12 multiplied by 1 we continue then we add 7 so what is this we are getting this is 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 that is 5 minus 12 then we add 7. If we do the addition first, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 7 is 12, minus 12, we get a 0. What does that mean? The point is x being 1 and y being 0 is one of the stationary points. So we move, we move and come to get the other y value. So this is going to give us y is equal to, we substitute once more, 2 into negative 2 cubed uh, plus 3 into negative 2 squared uh, minus 12 into negative 2 plus 7. So what is the value of this expression? We are having 2 into negative 8 added to 3 times 4 is 12 and negative 12 times 2 is plus 24 then we add 7 so what does that give us? we have uh, this is equal to negative 16 plus this is already 36 plus 7 and that comes to be um, positive 20 7. So the point here is going to be negative 2 and positive 27. So these are the two uh, 
stationary points, the coordinates of the two uh, stationary points, which we are able to uh, answer in part, uh, uh, part B, uh, part A. Uh, that is part B. Determine the coordinates of the turning points. Let's look at part C. In question, uh, the same question, part C requires us uh, to determine the type of sketch. So uh, the question will read um, sketch, sketch the Sketch the curve y is equal to uh, 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x plus 7. The most important item here, which is a deviation from our common knowledge, is we are required to do a sketch. Here, the sketch must not be on a graph. The scale here is not important. What is important is for us to show key areas. The key areas include, in our solution, we shall need to show the y-intercepts. We shall need to show the y-intercepts. And we shall also need to show um, the points, that is the turning, uh, the turning points. The turning points must be shown. And we are saying on x and y-axis, the scale is not necessarily important, but we should have some aspect of proportion. So let's get um, let's get moving. For us to sketch this, we shall need to know their nature. Uh, that is the uh, that and most important thing: the nature of the turning points. Are they minimums? or are they maximums? So what will it be? Is, it, is, is this point a minimum or is it a maximum? Is it a minimum or a maximum? So that is something that we need to determine here. How do we go about it? We take one point at a time. We, we take one point at a time. For instance now, we shall need to start with when x is equal to 1, is that a turning point? Is that a turning point a minimum or a maximum? How do we do it? We look at, we do a table, a small table here. And in this table, we shall give values, uh, let us say x is 1 here. On the left of x, we have 0 on the number line. And on the right of 1, it is a 2. Then we ask ourselves, what uh, is the gradient drawn from the dy dx? How is it like? If at x is equal to 1, the gradient we found it to be 0. So we straight away record that at 0. We shall seek this other 2. Very quickly, let us do that. The gradient function dy dx is equal to, we have found it to be a 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. So we substitute 0 here, we get a 0, plus we substitute a 0 here, we get 6 times 0 is 0, we subtract 12, we get negative 12. So this is negative 12, and the most important thing with that is that it is negative. That is the most important thing. It is negative. It's a negative value. So we shall seek to show the negative gradient. How does it slope? How does negative gradient slope? It slopes in this direction. It slopes like that. How does a zero gradient look like? We had met it here. It is horizontal. It is horizontal. Now let us look at gradient at 2. So the dy dx is equal to 6. Uh, we can use the above equation, don't have to repeat. And then we substitute 2 here into six, uh, 2 and then square multiplied by 6. We substitute 2 here, 
then we subtract 12. This is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. Plus 12, that's already 36. We subtract 12 and we are left with 24, which is positive. A positive gradient. How does a positive gradient slope? It slopes in this order. So the, this kind of uh, turning point is suggesting a turning point of that nature, which therefore we can conclude and say that um, we can conclude and say that at one zero we have a minimum. We have a minimum. It is a minimum. That is the conclusion that we need so that later on we shall do the curve sketching. So we need to determine the nature of these points so that we can move to curve sketching. Then we move at the second turning point. When x is equal to 2, we need that similar kind of a table whereby we shall have the values of x Maybe we start with x is equal to 2, the gradient here, the gradient at x is equal to 2 is a 0. On the right, on the left of 2, we have a 1. We have a 1, that is uh, on, sorry, we have negative 2, x is negative 2. So that gives us, uh, we don't have 1, it is negative 2. On the left of negative 2, we have negative 3, that is on the number line. Remember, we have negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 1, 0, 1. That's sort of a D. So we are talking about this value. This is where we are. Then we have negative 1. So at this point, we have found it to be 0. Let's get to negative 3. So we shall need to substitute in the, in the gradient function 6x uh, squared plus 6x minus 12. So we put 6 into negative 3 squared plus 6 into negative 2 uh, minus 12. Negative 3 squared <coughs> gives us a 9. 9 times 6 is 54. Negative, uh, 2 times 6 is negative 12. Um, uh, sorry, radio pardon. This should be negative 3. We are substituting x is negative 3. So this comes to be negative 18. And then minus 12. Viewers, let's compute this in our calculators. 54 minus 18 minus 12. And that gives us 24. Gives us 24. Um, once we get 24, we put this value here, but we note the most important thing is that it is positive. It is positive. That's the most important thing. And positive gradient, we have said, uh, slope like this. A slope like that, through the zero gradient, which is horizontal, horizontal. And we hope that uh, it will, the trend here will come up very well. So we substitute. Uh, the same into that equation, negative 1 into the gradient function, we get negative 1, uh, negative 1 squared into 6 plus negative 1 into 6, negative subtract 12. So negative 1 squared is 1 plus 6 is 6, multiplied, uh, added to negative 1 by 6 is negative 6, then uh, subtract uh, 12. How does that give us? We have 6, subtract 6 is 0, subtract 12, that is negative 12. So we have a negative 12, but the most important thing is that the gradient is negative at that point. How does negative gradient slope? It slopes in this direction. So in short, what we are saying is that the curve takes this kind of a shape. And we are therefore saying at, at the point um, negative 2, 27, 27, that stationary point 
is a maximum. It is a maximum. It is a maximum. So viewers, we are only now left with the task of showing these um, stationary points on a graph, which we had said the key areas include their nature, the point of y-intercept, and showing these points without having necessarily a very uniform scale. We just need, as we are told, to sketch. Let us do the sketch next. Let's look at the curve sketching. So the first thing, we have the axis, both y and x-axis, both y and x-axis, and we need, therefore, to have or to show the common zero, this is y, this is x. Then we look at what do we require. We require the value of one zero. We can spread it out. And say this is approximately one, and therefore this will be uh, our one zero point. Then the other one we need is two, negative two, twenty-seven. So we can have, this is negative one, this is negative two, we can have graduations of 10, uh, this is 20, and this is 30. So approximately 27 would be around here. And meeting with the 2 at this point, uh, at this point, sorry. And here, as we have been told, or rather as we have seen, at 1, 0, we have a minimum. So we expect a curve which will come and run here, like that. We expect a maximum at this point, a curve which will come and take that kind of a, a shape. Take that kind of a shape. Now, the only item missing is the y-intercept. At what point does the graph cut the y-axis? So we need to determine that one, and at y-intercept, always x is equal to zero. So we are moving around this axis. Y-axis, also known as x is equal to zero. This is known as y is equal to zero. So at what point will the curve cut the end value here? So the curve is y is equal to, uh, we had the curve is equal to two x cubed plus three x squared minus 12 of x plus 7. We substitute uh, 0 here, the 0 here, we have a 0 here and we have a 7. So y will be 7. So we can identify a 7 around that point and so our curve should meet or rather cut the other one and they should uh, therefore have a running at that and then move. So at this point, this is where our 7 is. That way, we shall have shown, uh, it is important we show these turning points so that we are able to uh, record everything. We have shown what we need. We need to show that one, that one, and that one, and in general, the, uh, the overall picture to be true, so that we can score such kind of question 10 out of 10. So that's just a green, uh, an exam one example in how to go about differentiation. Next, we look at application in kinematics. In our question number two, we look at application of differentiation in kinematics. As we had said earlier, this is the calculations involving displacement, involving velocity, involving acceleration of a particle which is in motion. So here we have a question which I'd like you viewers to write with me as I read it out that the displacement in meters of a moving particle after t seconds is given by the equation s. Here, the symbol s represents 
displacement in meters. S is equal to T cubed uh, minus 4T squared uh, minus 3T plus 6. So this is the expression for displacement. A determine the velocity of the particle when T is equal to 3. So we are asked velocity. How do we get velocity given displacement? So in this case, we normally say that um, when we seek velocity, we need to differentiate the expression or the equation for displacement with respect to time. And therefore, this means velocity will be equal to the differential of this equation, t cubed minus 4t squared minus 3t plus 6 with respect to time. With respect to time. And that gives us what? This gives us 3t squared. Differentiating this one gives you 8t uh, minus, uh, differentiating this one gives you a 3. 3t squared minus 8t minus 3. So this is our expression for velocity. Now the question is asking us to get velocity at t is equal to 3. The velocity at t equals to 3, that means we should have a substitute, we need to substitute for t, we put a 3, 3 squared minus 8 into 3 minus 3. Uh, what do we get? Uh, this is 3 squared gives you 9, this is 27. Uh, 27, this is 8 times 3 is 20 minus, uh, 24 uh, minus 3. So you get 27 minus 24 is 3. 3 minus 3 gives you 0 meters per second. Here it is important to note the way we put our units. It is meters per second for velocity. So that is one area uh, you, uh, you need to master uh, that. that uh, application. We are applying differentiation to obtain an item in um, uh, motion, uh, motion of a particle, that's velocity. So we differentiate uh, the displacement to get velocity. Question number B. We are asked for time when the particle is momentarily at rest. So the question is, Find the time when the particle is momentarily at rest. What does it mean for a particle to be momentarily at rest? It means it is not moving. If it is not moving, then its velocity is equal to zero. So V is equal to zero. So at that point, we can uh, come in and look at this expression. Our expression for velocity. Uh, v which was 3 uh, t squared minus 8 t minus 3 is equal to 0. So we seek to, or we have to, um, work on this one, find the t. So uh, straight away, let us work on this one. As you see, this is a quadratic equation which we need to work it out. We need to look for two numbers whose product is... 3 times negative 3, we get negative 9. We need to look for two numbers whose sum is negative 8. Negative 8. Which are these two numbers? So, I'd like you to go through your mind and source two numbers whose product is negative 9. And when you add them, you get negative 8. And those two numbers are a negative 9 and a 1. Multiply the 2, you get negative 9. Add the 2, you get negative 8. These two numbers should come and substitute the middle term. We get 3t squared minus 9, uh, 9t plus 1t minus 3 is equal to 0. Now, we do the factoring. We do the factoring out such that we get 3. Uh, t factored out because it is common in the 2 and we are left with a t minus 
um, we factor out this we are left with a 3 then plus here we factor out a 1 and we are left with a t minus 3 and that gives you 0 so in 3t squared we get the 3t the left with the t we remove 3t from here we are left with just a 3 and everything else is okay now we put the multipliers as one factor 3t and 1 and then we have t minus 3 as the other factor then at this point we see that uh, either 3t plus 1 is equal to 0 so 3t is equal to negative 1 t is equal to negative a third or we may have that t uh, plus uh, t minus 3 this one is equal to 0 and therefore t is equal to 3 so at time uh, t is equal to 3 or at time if you look at this this is not possible to have time in the negative so this kind of an answer should be disqualified we disqualify this one and uh, summarize and say t is equal to 3 it is at this point which you are uh, where you can get that a question like find the maximum displacement then you use this kind of a value um, and then finally we look at uh, part c of this question whereby we shall uh, look at acceleration so let us move on to get acceleration we use this space uh, in C, we are asked to find or determine the acceleration, determine the acceleration of the particle, determine the acceleration of the particle when t is equal to 2 seconds. t is equal to 2 seconds. So acceleration is given as the differential of velocity with respect to time. And that means, therefore, we shall have the differential, or uh, to get acceleration, we shall differentiate 3t uh, squared minus 8t minus 3 with respect to t, and that gives us 6t. Uh, we differentiate negative 8t, we get negative 8. And this is the expression uh, for uh, meters per second. And since we ask at a particular time, then we can say acceleration at t is equal to 2 is given as 6. We substitute t for 2 minus 8. This is 6 by 2 is 12. Minus 8, we get 4 meters per second squared. And that is our uh, expected solution for acceleration. Viewers, we move directly into an activity. This is a question that I would like you to answer and give the feedback in our live section. Let's have the activity. Uh, this is our activity for this lesson. The question is that the equation, the equation of a curve, the equation of a curve is given by, is given by y is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared minus 3x we are required to a find the gradient function find the gradient function then b uh, we shall be required to find the gradients find the gradients at x is equal to 1 and then um, c find the value find the value of y at x is equal to 1 and finally in d we're going to determine the nature determine determine the coordinates Determine the coordinates of turning points. 
determine the coordinates of the turning points and state and state the year and state the year nature and state the year nature. When we talk about uh, the year nature, we would like to know are they points of inflection? Are they maximum points? Are they minimum points? So with that viewers, we are going to uh, end our recorded part there so that we meet in the live section whereby after working this you will tell me of the answers. Now these materials are available in our educational YouTube channel on the handle uh, at Steve at Steve Kitao that is six sixty. This is our handle on YouTube and we are also available on TikTok using the same handle. Thank you for joining me and I'm very grateful for your time. In this um, learning or in this YouTube channel, we do a lot of online learning. You'll find educational materials for mathematics from Form 1 to Form 4 and also for chemistry from 1 to form 4. Kindly subscribe and let us get learning. Thank you and God bless you.